Good morning to you. Good morning. It's very good to see those of you who are here in church and also be with those of you who are on Zoom. It's lovely to see you this morning. Happy New Year. Uh, If you don't know me, my name is Ben and I'm the curate here at St. Saviour's and it's wonderful to welcome you to our worship this morning. I hope that over the last uh, few days, although Christmas has been very different this year. You've had a happy and enjoyable time, um, despite all the challenges of this time of year. And I particularly want to say a thank you this morning for all of those who have decorated the church, and both inside and outside. It's looked amazing over this, uh, over this festive period and really brightened up um, um, the area. And I know that that's been a real team effort, lots of people knitting and decorating so thank you so much for all who've been involved in that. Um, You may also be aware that uh, uh, we were running a competition, a Christmas decorating uh, window competition and I'm pleased to say that that was uh, recently judged by uh, Kate Botley, our resident uh, TV vicar Um, and I'm delighted to say that Rosie Allen won that competition Um, so she'll be receiving a prize from Uh, from us very soon. So thank you for everyone who took part in the Your Window on Christmas competition. Uh, Again, it's just really helped to brighten um, up the the kind of area and share something of the Christmas message. You will be aware, of course, that at the moment we are in tier four restrictions. Um, For the time being, that means we are able to open Um, as a church, but it means we need to be particularly vigilant about our our safety and our hygiene procedures. So can I encourage you that when you come into the church building, if you're here in church, that you take a seat as soon as possible. Don't wander around. Don't chat to people. I know it's very counterintuitive. And then just leave quietly uh, at the end of the service through the doors at the back. and that will just help to keep us safe. And it's probably worth saying that if you are able to access the service at home on Zoom, it's probably better to be doing that uh, for the time being. And only just come to church if you're not able to access the service online. Hopefully all of these things uh, keep us safe and allow us to continue to, be, to remain open and in the church building for those who need us to be here. We're going to begin our service with this this opening prayer that's going to appear on the screen now. So let's have a moment of quiet. And we say together, Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we begin this new year with so much uncertainty, it's important to remind ourselves of the God we worship. And we're going to do that in our first song now, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
As we come to the Lord near the start of this new year, let us seek his grace to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So may God, who loved the world so much, that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us our sins, and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, we're going to have our Bible reading now, and Steve Bartle is going to read that for us. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the reading today is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. And I'm reading from the Good News Bible. Chapter 1, verse 1. From Paul, who by God's will is an apostle of Christ Jesus, to God's people in Ephesus, who are faithful in their life in union with Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Let us give thanks to the, to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for in our union with Christ he has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. Even before the world was made, God had already chosen us to be, be his through our union with Christ, so that we would be holy and without fault before him. Because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ he would make us his sons. This was his pleasure and purpose. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave, gave us in his dear son. For by the death of Christ we are set free, that is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God for which he gave to us in such large measure. In all his wisdom and insight, God did what he had purposed and made known to us the secret plan he had already decided to complete by means of Christ. This plan, which God will complete when the time is right, is to bring all creation together, everything in heaven and on earth with Christ as head. All things are done according to God's plan and decision, and God chose us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose based on what he had decided from the very beginning. Let us then, who were the hope, first to hope in Christ, praise God's glory. And also you became God's people when you heard the true message, the good news that brought you salvation. You believed in Christ, and God put his stamp of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit he had promised. The Spirit is the guarantee that we shall receive what God has promised, his people, and, his, and this assures us that God will give complete freedom to those who are his. Let us praise his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Steve, so much for uh, reading that Bible reading for us from Ephesians chapter 1. And before we think about that together a little bit more, we're going to affirm our faith in our God. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. 
Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we think about that Bible reading together, let us pray. Heavenly Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us all to the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, a happy new year to you. I wonder, um, have any of you made any New Year's resolutions? If you have and you're on Zoom, you might want to share them with others later in the breakout rooms. Um, I suspect that many of you may be fairly light on resolutions uh, this year. If you're anything like me, and I know I am, um, your resolutions may largely boil down to go places and see people once that becomes possible again. Go places and see people. That's the big ambition when it becomes possible again. Normally, in normal times, whatever those are, um, people might make all sorts of New Year's resolutions, uh, perhaps to pick up a new skill in the year ahead, like learn a language, for example. Now, I'm not much of a linguist, and my high school French lessons are not something that I look back to very fondly. But a few years ago, um, a friend of my wife, Sarah, and mine uh, offered us an Italian lesson. Now, my Italian is largely confined to knowing what types of pizza and pasta I like in a restaurant, but we thought we'd have a go at learning some Italian. Our friend is English, um, although fluent in Italian, and his method for teaching was total immersion. The whole lesson, he never spoke a word of English. We were being taught Italian entirely in Italian. And if you've ever tried to learn a language that way, it's full on. You are flung into a whole new world trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Many different analogies have been used for this opening section of Ephesians that Steve read for us. A snowball running down a hill, quite appropriate at the moment. A runaway racehorse even. But whatever you choose, it is full on. There's a lot crammed into all that Steve read for us. In the original language of the Bible, it constitutes one very long sentence. And Paul, um, the writer of Ephesians, probably dictated this letter. And we can perhaps imagine some poor um, scribe desperately trying to keep up with him as he dictated this beautiful description of all that God is doing past, present, and future. And it's a powerful vision that can sustain us as we look to a new year with Jesus. Firstly, it tells us that we are chosen. We are chosen in Jesus. We are a chosen people. To be chosen means that we are wanted by God. And we've always been wanted. We were chosen by God before the world began, verse 4. And in many ways, that's a crazy thought, isn't it? Why would God choose us? Why, was it, why would he choose you and I before the world began? Well, it's important to say a couple of things here. We are a chosen people, not chosen persons. The emphasis is on God calling a people, not on snatching individuals. It's not like PE lessons at school. There's a bit of a theme here, isn't there? Where some people would get picked first and others, and I'll let you guess which applied to me, got picked last. God has chosen a people from before the world began. A people, not individuals. Secondly, it's an act of love. God's people are chosen in love. Being chosen is not a reason for superiority. 
Unfortunately, at different times, this idea of being chosen has been taken up and applied in ways that have been very damaging. But as Paul will go on to show us, we have not been chosen because of any goodness in us. The startling thing is that despite the fact that there is no good reason for us to be on his team, God wants us there in love. And isn't that an amazing thought to start this year with? If we know, love, and trust Jesus, we are part of a chosen people, chosen by God, wanted and loved by him before the world began. A people God is committed to look after, care for, and love. There is never a time when God did not want you to be part of his family. Circumstances may shake our confidence in this truth, but in Jesus we are wanted we are loved, we are chosen. Secondly, we are adopted. To return to my story earlier, my friend who is fluent in Italian did not suddenly wake up being fluent. He moved to Italy because he met and married another expat who was working there at the time. And by that point, her Italian was pretty good but his was initially non-existent. It came through hard work, sweat, and tears. In the same way that we weren't naturally good at, that we aren't naturally good at languages, we have to learn them. We aren't naturally part of God's people. But whereas we learn a language through practice and effort, we are brought into God's family by someone else's effort. Paul tells us in verse 5 of chapter 1 of Ephesians that Christians have been adopted into God's family. We've been adopted. We weren't natural members of God's family, but we were brought in and given all the rights and responsibilities of a family member. But to be brought into the family required the death of a family member. Jesus had to die. And that is why we can never feel smug. To be chosen and adopted in God's family required Jesus to die so that we could be forgiven. But the amazing thing is that Jesus willingly did that. He didn't keep the joy of heaven to himself, but rather he came into our world, took on our brokenness and pain, and died so that we could be adopted into God's family. Jesus is, if you will, the model son who gives up what he has for the lost members of his family. Being sons and daughters of God means that we can come to God with total confidence. We don't have to worry about the things we've done wrong in the past, the present, or even the things that we will do wrong in the future. Jesus' death on the cross means we are a forgiven people. We can come to God every day knowing that he will listen and answer us because we are forgiven and part of his family through Jesus. We never have to be afraid. We are chosen and adopted because of what Jesus has done. But not only were we chosen in the past, not only are we now adopted and forgiven through the death and resurrection of Jesus, but our future is secure in him as well. God has a plan to finish fixing his world and bring everything together united under Jesus. We read this in verses 9 and 10. Jesus will be in charge. The same Jesus who gave his life so we could be forgiven will one day bring the unraveled threads of our universe together and united under his rule. Jesus died to fix the world, but we know that the world still groans. And the last year has brought this home to us in ways that have felt far too real to those of us who are so used to safety and comfort. Our world aches, doesn't it? And as we begin this year, we face huge challenges with the new variant of the virus and many areas, including our own, in tier four. 
But there will come a time when Jesus' victory on the cross will be worked out in every atom of the universe. A world without pain, under a perfect ruler. And that's where things are really heading. Even though it doesn't look like it now, in a world still rocked by the pandemic, God's chosen and forgiven family have hope. We will live together in a healed universe under Jesus. Chosen, adopted, and united in Jesus forever. So how does this all impact the way we live our lives? Well, firstly, we need to listen as if we were learning a new language. Paul tells the Ephesians here that they have become a part of that story when they heard and they believed, in verse 13. We often think about this as something we do at the start of our Christian journey. And that moment is vitally important when we hear and believe about Jesus for the first time. Because there comes a moment in each of our lives when we go from knowing about God to knowing God. And that comes when we choose to hear and believe the good news about Jesus. And if you know that you haven't done that, you can do that today. Just by asking God into your life in the quietness of your heart. Yet we all need to go on hearing and believing this good news every day. It's the very road we travel in the Christian life. There is no other way to go. Hard work and effort just doesn't cut it. It's hearing and believing the good news every day. So if we already consider ourselves Christians, how will we keep the good news front and center in our life together this year? Secondly, we need to praise, like learning to speak a new language. Paul bookends this section in Ephesians with the word praise. He uses it in verse 3 and 14. In some translations, it's thanks, but it amounts to the same thing. If we have come to the point of hearing and believing in Jesus, if we know we are chosen, forgiven, and united under Jesus, praise will drip from our lips. And praise isn't just singing. Although that is one important way that we express our love for God and what he has done for us in Jesus. Praise is when we choose to shift our thinking from our problems to what God has done for us. It's not about ignoring them or suppressing them, but it's keeping them in the perspective of what is true now and what will be true for all eternity in Jesus. Praise is when we will talk about this God who has chosen, adopted, and united us under Jesus. Talking about the difference God makes, not to the exclusion of everything else, but like we would talk about anything else that is important in our life. Praise is also lived. The decisions we will make flow from a desire to please the God who has done all of this for us. At the start of this new year, uncertainty continues to abound. But we can have total confidence in Jesus. God chose us from the very beginning. We were adopted into his forgiven family. And we have a glorious future united on Je under Jesus who will fix the world. We are secure in Christ. May we all hear that good news and may our lives echo with his praise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you chose us from before the foundation of the world. That we were adopted into your forgiven family. And that united in Jesus, we have a glorious future. May we remember all of that. And may it make a difference in our lives as we navigate the current uncertainties. 
for Jesus' sake and for his glory. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer now, and Mark Barnett is going to lead us. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, good morning. Our prayers this morning are centred around chapter 5 of Paul's letter to the Galatians. Heavenly Father, at the threshold of this new year, we turn to you. We come to you with the needs of others to stand in the gap between theirs and our problems and suffering, seeking your answers to our dilemmas. We have one, our Lord Jesus Christ, who intercedes for us at your right hand, Father, God our Heavenly Father, and you ask us to intercede for others in the same way Christ does. We are humbled that you accept our prayers because Jesus mitigates on our behalf. Heavenly Father, many of us have received and continue to live with unwanted insights into suffering, loneliness, isolation and self-neglect, fear and anxiety, ill health of all kinds, lack of medical intervention, financial hardship, redundancy, bereavement. Father, the list is long. This morning, we bring before you those who suffer in our midst. Beryl Bennett, Roy Kershaw, Sophie Stainthorpe, Alia Mark Barnett, Noreen Simpson, George Walwyn, Paul Blatherwick, Marjorie Thornton, Susan Porter, Margaret Footit, Jean and Steve Thorpe, Dawn Paxton, Dorothy Kerr, Margaret Rose, Jonathan Hill, David Taylor, Anne Basford, Marion and Pete Thorpe, Mick Talbot, Frank Maitley, and others, Lord, particularly those who have suffered recent bereavement. We bring them before you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, the psalmist says, can't you do something about our pain and suffering? Are you not in this situation with us? Don't you suffer with us after all? You created us. Many of our fellow human beings, who you ask us to love and forgive in your name, destroy and exploit through greed and violence. And yet we are involved in the same behaviour by putting our needs above others. Lord, what is your answer? In Galatians, Lord, you say through Paul, so I say, walk in the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of our human nature. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Heavenly Father, to enable us to join with you and answer the cry of our suffering, develop the fruits of your Spirit in our lives this new year, so we may live out your love to others, and receive your love through the fruits of your spirit in others' lives. Your love to meet the needs of others. Your joy, knowing that despite our failings and suffering, you are permanently with us. Your peace, overcoming our anxieties by comforting our minds and spirit. Your long suffering, to never give on others or ourselves. Your kindness, acting as your hands in practical giving, your goodness, forgiving and avoiding cynicism, your faithfulness, never giving up on others, your gentleness, comforting us, treating us with great respect, your self-control, keeping us from overreacting in provoking circumstances. Lord, Pour out your love upon us by the work of your Holy Spirit this year. In our weakness, give us your compassion to love ourselves and our neighbour. Father, enable us in our praying to focus on asking our Lord Jesus 
to produce his fruits in our lives to do his will. Heavenly Father, we bring you these prayers in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Mark. We continue in prayer with the church's special prayer for today. We say together, God, our Father, in love you sent your Son, that the world may have life. Lead us to seek him among the outcasts and to find him in those in need. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we think about God's love for us, past, present, and future, in our final song, we, um, our final song reflects that faithfulness and love. We sing, Lord, for the years. Final prayer of blessing. 
The love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service and the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. <laughs>